Australia has recently stunned the globe by announcing a $100 billion project that would transform the international iron ore industry. But how did China obtain exclusive mining rights in Guinea, placing Australia in a bind? Join us as we investigate why Guinea's decision to sever relations with Australia has caused consternation in the sector, and what this signifies for China's rising dominance. After more than a decade of discussions, China has come closer to lessening its reliance on Australian iron ore with a momentous deal in Guinea, West Africa, that will unleash one of the world's largest untapped resources. The deal was reached a month ago with joint venture partners by China's steel giant Bawu to mine and ship iron ore from the Simandu project in southeast Guinea, the world's most important new entrant to the market, bringing the biggest threat to Australia's export dominance of the commodity closer to reality. Satellite images obtained by the Australian Financial Review last week revealed that construction on crucial port infrastructure is well underway, more than 550 kilometers from the deposits, according to the anticipated train route. According to the project developer, winning consortium Simandu WCS, the enormous project comprises 235 bridges and 11 kilometer long tunnels. During more than two years of heightened tensions between the two nations, the top two Australian exports have been spared Chinese prohibitions and limitations. According to the Financial Review, Guinean government officials traveled to Beijing and Shanghai this month to meet with Bawu after the steelmaker accepted the main position in the project, opening the path for Chinese regulators to unlock money for offshore investment. The most recent developments indicate that the long-delayed project is gaining traction, putting the greatest challenge to Australia's iron ore export dominance a medium-term possibility. As Xi Jinping's China emerges from the epidemic determined to stabilize its economy, Beijing has given Bawu the go-ahead to secure initial production by 2025. The high-grade and vast amount of iron ore in Guinea's Simandu range is extensively recognized. Attempts to utilize it in the past have been limited by the difficulty and expense of access and transportation, as well as political hurdles. Satellite photographs, on the other hand, reveal that construction is underway on what the Guinean government characterizes as the world's largest mining, train, and port infrastructure complex. Alan Clark, whose resource consulting business, CM Group, has been working in Guinea for many years and has a lot of experience there, said, The project is now moving forward, and some big Chinese companies are investing in it. This shows how serious China is about developing Simandu. China is aiming to lessen its reliance on iron ore from Australia and Brazil, which provide the majority of its steelmaking needs. The Chinese government created a five-year plan to invest in new offshore mining in 2021. While it has increased domestic production and sought additional supply from Russia and Mongolia, this would only be a fraction of the game-changing supply offered by the Simandu project, which, according to analysts, would make China the world's third largest producer after Australia and Brazil accounting for 10% of global iron ore supply. Bawu announced on its WeChat account that the specifics of a week-long visit by Guinean government officials that followed the signing of a Simandu project infrastructure term sheet on December 23rd. The purpose of the visit was to deepen bilateral trust relationships and jointly promote the success of Simandu project cooperation. The December 23rd agreement occurred as the China Mineral Resources Company, CMRC, a new centralized buying body, began conversations with mining businesses used to dealing with China's steel mills individually. Both events, according to analysts, show Beijing's intention to minimize its reliance on Australia, which supplies 60% of its iron ore imports. The December 23rd Simandu term sheet advances an infrastructure joint venture founded last year by the Guinean government and the two consortiums with rights to mine in Simandu, Simfer Jersey and winning consortium Simandu. Rio Tinto, which owns a majority stake in Simfer Jersey, concentrated on Blocks 3 and 4. Simfer and WCS both own 42.5% of the infrastructure joint venture. According to industry insiders, while the project was moving forward, there was still no formal agreement on the infrastructure sharing agreements amongst the competing consortiums. Winning International, the main stakeholder in WCS and located in Singapore, declined an interview request, citing, the sensitive nature of ongoing negotiations with the government of Guinea and other industrial partners. The Rio Tinto-backed group expects to have access to the infrastructure, but officials have warned investors that there is still a lot of work to be done, including finalizing cost estimates and finance, as well as obtaining permissions and other permits.
Rio defined the December 23rd agreement as a pivotal next step towards securing the shareholder agreement, cost estimates, and regulatory authority approvals necessary to progress the co-development of rail and port facilities in its quarterly report issued last week. In November, Fortescue Metal CEO Andrew Forrest, who was also pursuing African expansion aspirations, took a shot at Rio's Samandu Venture. Dr. Forrest said of his own investment in the region, we didn't waste billions upon billions of dollars to get 50% of 50%. Rio CFO Peter Cunningham stated during an investor day briefing in November that the Samandu project was the most uncertain component of the company's capital spend allocation. According to him, it is in our capital guidance, but it is contingent on us reaching agreement with the infrastructure pathway with our JV partners, the Government of Guinea and WCS. Analysts point out that WCS has a track record of completing large-scale infrastructure projects in Guinea. In March of last year, Guinea's government stated that infrastructural improvements must be finished by December 2024 and commercial production must begin by March 31, 2025. The train link's construction was abruptly suspended in July of last year, owing to a dispute between Guinea's government and both WCS and Rio Tinto, according to Reuters at the time. However, it is thought that work is presently being done. The consortium's advanced design for the 552-kilometer Trans-Guinean Railway and Riverport at Moriyaba is depicted in a business presentation, with earthworks evident on satellite pictures. Bawu, which has a minority ownership in the Simford joint venture, inked a cooperation agreement with WCS in September, which was intended to result in it obtaining an equity stake in the SWC subsidiary firms heading infrastructure and mining. By December 23rd, Bawu had been added to the list of joint venture partners, which also included Simfer, WCS, and the Guinean government. This arrangement, posted on Baiwu's social media account, is considered as a critical step in getting China's authorities to approve the project's funding. Even private enterprises' money outflows from China are strictly monitored. Winning International, together with its partners, played a critical role in boosting Guinean bauxite exports. The SMB winning consortium claims to have spent about 3 billion US dollars on infrastructure in Guinea, including 700 million US dollars on a 123 kilometer railway connecting the Santu mining zone and the Dapalon port. Mining executives in Africa have stated that the project's infrastructure is extremely ambitious because of the steep terrain and the need to create dozens of bridges, purpose built tunnels, and a massive port. They do admit, though, that China has the financial wherewithal to make it happen if they are motivated enough and winning has a track record of achievement in challenging projects in Guinea. In a 2021 paper, Peter Kai and Richard McGregor of the Lowy Institute wrote about China's plans to stop relying on Australia for iron ore. The 110-kilometer Samandu mountain range in Guinea is one of the best medium to long-term solutions to reduce dependence on Australia. It is widely considered to be the highest quality iron ore still untapped in the world. Many people have dismissed Simandu because of the difficulty of developing large mines in African countries. According to Mr. Clark, the previous experience of bauxite mining in Guinea implies that this might be a mistake. He also added, Strangely, this is an example of where the iron ore industry could learn from bauxite. Since 2015, Guinea has rapidly and successfully developed its bauxite mining export industry to the point where it is now by far the largest global exporter to China. That suggests Simandu will advance. The basic scenario is that it will hit the market in 2025. Simandu will never be a low-cost producer serving the Chinese market. The transportation expenditures to bring it to the shore are high, and it's a long journey to China. Even with the greater ore grade, it will not be a cheaper cost producer than the provided material from Australia. However, China must develop new supply sources that are not Australian or Brazilian and are not controlled by the current crop of large multinational mining companies. As we come to the end of this mind-blowing discovery, it's clear that the world iron ore market is going through a big change. So click the subscribe button and the notify bell to join us on learning about the latest news and how it affects things in a big way.